Now, the winning dog in one of Ireland's most lucrative greyhound races has tested positive for the Class A drug cocaine, according to the Irish Greyhound Board. I'm going to talk to CEO Gerard Donard in a few moments. But first, RT journalist Sharon Violon has been investigating doping in the greyhound industry. Here's just some of what she discovered. Anyone looking to get a cheating edge doesn't have to look too far. The internet is teeming with sites selling performance enhancers. We ordered four products, all illegal here. They arrived in the post to RTE. The first is clenbuterol or angel dust. We have equine growth hormone. This stimulates naturally occurring steroids in the body like testosterone and estrogen. We have cyanidum, a steroidal painkiller with a built-in diuretic. And look at this, Numit, another painkiller, but it advertises itself as not showing up in tests. And Sharon Yviolan is with us now. Sharon, you're very welcome. Thanks for being with us. How significant is the problem of doping in greyhound racing? Claire, I think the inescapable truth is that we have a, a significant uh, problem here and all we need to do is look at the data. Now, in fairness, the data is supplied to us by the Irish Greyhound Board themselves. So in terms of transparency and openness, recognition has to be made uh, there on that. But uh, we're looking at 91 adverse analytical findings. We're looking at 21 different prohibited substances. And it's when we look at the range of prohibited substances, I think that's where the, the, the true story here is. Uh, looking at stimulants, we're, we're looking at the likes of metal this is, is Ritalin in human medicine. It's uh, used to treat ADHD. Amphetamine, also known as speed, uh, no explanation necessary there. Stenazolol. Stenazolol is a class A drug. It is a serious performance enhancer used to, to bulk up muscle. Uh, think of uh, Ben Johnson and his disgrace at the time of the Seoul Olympics in 1988. Um, we're also looking, and it should be said, that there are seven stenazolols so far this year. Now that is a very worrying development. We have drugs here like heptaminol, that's a vasoconstrictor, so uh, we're looking at um, in a uh, beneficial effect on, on blood pressure, so think of pumping blood and oxygen around the body. And we're also looking at the benzolycanine, uh, which we saw uh, last week, uh, cocaine. This, again, like stenazolol, a, a class A drug, which, which saw Graham Holland's uh, name up in lights okay, last week. OK, Graham Holland, the trainer of Clonbrian Hero, he, uh, the, the dog tested positive for cocaine. Uh, Graham Holland is the most successful trainer in the country. Two and a half thousand wins, but not the first <laughs> trainer whose dogs have tested positive for co cocaine. G Graham Holland is Mr Big possibly, as you say, the most successful trainer this country has ever seen. He's not the first trainer. He, he's not even the first owner trainer to test positive for cocaine this year. We've seen six cocaine positives in 2017. So that is a very uh, worrying development. Okay, we tried to contact Mr Holland. We didn't get a response, but he did speak to the Sunday Times and he said that he had never administered an illegal drug to a greyhound. He said he believes Clonbrine Hero ingested a small amount of cocaine by licking people's hands when they stroked the dog, the dog's head after it won a race. Moving on to the other uh, drugs that, that we've come across, what is the impact of using painkillers, analgesics, on dogs? Yeah, we, we see quite a few analgesics, non-steroidals, uh, painkillers being used here. And the tendency, Claire, might be to dismiss the, the seriousness of these drugs as dopes. Uh, that is wrong. These drugs mask the, 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 the protective instinct in the dog not to run, not to perform in circumstances where they're lame, where they're sore, where they're carrying an, injur an injury. So these powerful drugs, they override that I innate, um, I suppose, instinct not to perform when a dog is carrying an injury. So there would be significant animal welfare uh, you know, consequences to an animal running in circumstances where it's really, really So shouldn't. if you're somebody who enjoys this sport, who likes going to Corraheen Park, for example, and, and putting a few bob on, on the dog in trap number six, what does it mean for the integrity of the sport? Well, you know, this word integrity, we should say so we, we've dealt with stimulants, we, we, we've dealt with um, the, uh, the, the painkillers, the non-steroidals. We also have, on the other end of the spectrum, we have uh, the sedatives. Uh, we have those drugs which might, uh, in, in, in fact, actually make a dog run slower. So you talk, um, and that would be chlorpromazine, it would be like a 
the likes of pentobarbital as well, although we're not saying on this programme that uh, pentobarbital is a deliberate dope, but in the words of Professor Morris, there is no place for a drug like pentobarbital in animal performance sports. But you asked about what it means. Well, look, integrity, you need integrity in any sport and greyhound racing is no dif different. The Irish Bookmakers Association, they refer to these historic weaknesses in the integrity of the product. Uh, now, they do also, in fairness, uh, recognise that very significant strides have been made by the IGB in terms of tackling doping and in terms of uh, regulation. Um, but as I said, we, we've drugs here which would make a, a dog run faster, we have drugs here which would make a dog run slower and we have drugs here to mask a dog's okay. pain. So it it's not a pretty picture. But the Irish Greyhound Board does say, and we'll hear that again mm -hmm. in a moment, that they're tackling this head on and that only a very small percentage of dogs are testing positive. Yeah, this, this is the argument that, that, that's trotted out by the IGB again and again and it is in very many respects I think a flawed argument for two reasons. One, the sampling strategy employed by the IGB up until very recently has been random or routine. And again, this, the, these are the words used by Professor Tim Morris, world anti-doping expert in his report commissioned by the IGB. Random routine sampling is not effective when you're tackling doping. You need targeted, you need intelligence-led approach to doping. You're looking at perhaps betting analysis, you're looking at uh, intelligence, you're looking at anomalies, you're looking at out-of-competition testing. That is absolutely crucial. And we should say it's not just doping, there is a reputational issue here as well, Claire. 80% of, of dogs running on UK tracks, they are supplied by this country. And as and from the 1st of January this year, each and every one of those Irish dogs is subject to mandatory screening and that is automatic testing for long acting substances. So, you know, we, we have the doping issue, we have the reputational issue and again, this, this one or two percent, this low percentage figure that's trotted out by the IGB, these are tests that were done at a time when our testing laboratory wasn't fit for purpose. In the words of the same Professor Tim Morris, the performance standard of the lab was sub-optimal. So, uh, you know, accepting IGB's bona fides in terms of the advance and the, 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 the progress that has been made, uh, that low percentage argument is a flawed one in my view. Okay, well Sharon, thank you very much. We'll put all that to the IGB in just a moment, but I want to come uh, to some people in the know in the audience. Pete Weatherburn, first of all, uh, Pete, Pete the vet, as people will know you. Are you satisfied as a vet that things are changing in this industry? Well, it's good to hear that there are improvements planned, but from listening to what Sharon said, they're much needed, and I think there's much more needs to be done. The absolute number of tests isn't higher than it was a few years ago, um, and the targeting doesn't seem to be done in a more effective way. And if you talk to people in the industry, they would say that the timing of the tests could be improved as well. The methodology could be improved. So I think we need to have more input from expert sources from outside the country to give a critique on what's happening before we can genuinely judge it, rather than just taking as read what we're told by the industry itself. OK, Dolores, uh, Ruth is beside you, and people who know the greyhound industry will know all about you, a, a champion trainer. You run Clean Kennels, you're a breeder now. Um, you've called, haven't you, for stiffer penalties for those people who are found doping? Yes, on several occasions. Um, the failings here are when a greyhound runs in a competition, that that dog is allowed to run through the competition after a finding in early rounds. That um, it should be brought in the UK system where a greyhound, if he tests positive, uh, has what's known as priority testing done. And that test is uh, taken within a week. So the result comes back and that dog isn't allowed to run in the competition. Um, this has been a huge failing in this instance. And what about financial penalties? The fines are minuscule. Um, for as long as I've been in greyhound racing, I don't know of any high-profile trainer that's ever been one uh, suspended. Even if it's a... F uh, there's never been one suspended for multiple, um, you Breaches. know, drug... Yeah. Um, products in the system. And but the fines are small, like, like give us an example of, of a typical fine if you know. <laughs> well the fines go from about 100 euros up to in one or two cases there has been a fine of 2,000. 
but um, we're the only sport that has never had anybody banned uh, for a drug. Um, and you, and you think that that's, that should change. Uh, Tommy Bolton is here as well. Tommy, we'll get the microphone to you there in the, in the blue shirt. You're an ex-trainer. What do you think? Stiffer penalties, as Dolores says? Yeah, possibly stiffer penalties, like, but you may give the new system, like they've got in a new machine in Limerick, paid over four, 400,000 for it, and it's obviously doing its job. So, like as I say, they're, they're bringing in that and see what, what happens from so here give, on. Give, like, you know. give the changes a chance. Uh, Austin yeah. is beside you. You're an owner and a breeder, Austin. That's right, Claire. Um, the system's not robust enough, you heard there beside you earlier. Uh, um, over 5,000 samples are tested annually. And of those samples, less than 1% prove positive for prohibitive substances. And of that 1%, the majority are for therapeutic drugs. Now, the samples are taken on a random basis and let's, at each race meeting. And, um, so they don't tell you before they're going to test? No, they don't tell you. And the legislation has been updated recently to allow for out-of-competition testing. And um, as Tommy pointed out, the Irish Graham Board has spent over 400,000 on a new instrument in the laboratory in Limerick. And the laboratory is under the control of a very eminent okay. man. Well, look, we'll come to Ger Dollard now. Thank you very much, Ger Dollard uh, from the Irish Graham Board. It's a bit of an odd system, isn't it? You're in charge of promoting the industry and you're in charge of, of testing for, for breaches when it comes to doping. Yeah, Can you do both successfully? Uh, yes, I mean, I, I think, Claire. The, the Irish Greyhound Board position is very clear. There is no place in the industry for those who engage in doping practices or misuse of medication. And anybody who does engage in those practices is undermining the industry and undermining the integrity of the sport. We have invested quite a bit, as has been said, in staff and in equipment in terms of upping our game in relation to regulation. Um, the Morris report was mentioned. That was a report that was commissioned by the Irish Greyhound Board. We have followed very closely the recommendations from that report. We have a scientific committee, which has national and international experts advising the board in relation to dealing with doping and medication. Okay, in sport. so look, so. you know, even if we accept that you're, cha you're, you're changing things, you have a, an image problem here. Um, I wouldn't accept that. I, I, I think the Irish Greyhound Board, similar to other sports, has an issue in relation to dealing with doping in sport. The Why don't you just ban the guys who are found to be doping dogs? Well, the, the system we've set up is that there's an independent control committee. They assess each case, they come up with their recommendations and their findings. Will you ban people? Will you get them out of the industry and clean it up? They have the opportunity to impose fines, they have the opportunity to issue but the fines are 100 euro. disqualification orders, they have exclusion orders, so there are a range of measures available to them. I'm giving you the opportunity here, George, to say you're going to toughen up on this. But I think it's, it's quite obvious the Irish Greyhound Board has toughened up. I think there's been a sea change since 2015 in relation to our approach to regulation, to testing. Um, we are not going to tolerate. Um, abuse of medication or doping in sport. And I think the, the tests which we're discussing um, have come from the Irish Greyhound Board. We are the ones who have published these tests. We are the ones who are doing the tests. And it's all designed to, to give confidence in the sport that we will not accept doping or misuse of medication. Do you test out of competition now regularly? Yes, and we are empowered to go to people's kennels and do testing. There is random sampling. There is a range of testing going on. Obviously, it wouldn't be prudent to say exactly how we do it, but we are part of an interagency group where we share intelligence. Um, if you're going to somebody's kennels, do you have to inform them before you go? No, I, the Irish Greyhound Board can go and test um, dogs at those kennels. OK, and it's the same then at race meetings? Yes. You test, you test randomly there as yeah, well? B before or after the race. OK. Uh, are, can you give any commitment on fines and suspensions tonight that the penalties will be increased? Well, the, the Irish Greyhound Board operates under regulations. Um, we are a semi-state body. We are guided by regulation. Um, the fines, the maximum fine at the moment is €7,500. But I think there are measures available to the control committee in terms of exclusion orders or disqualification orders. Can we but talk about um, uh, the breeding of dogs? Is it the correct figure? Over 16,000 greyhound pups bred in Ireland every year. Um, I think that there's a, a dispute in relation to, I suppose, the figure in relation to unaccounted for dogs. Um, the Irish Greyhound Board becomes aware of a dog when it enters into the racing system. I think until such time... So you don't know how many dogs are bred for, for racing? The I think ones that don't make the grade, you, you wouldn't know about exactly. that, is that I it? think until such time that there is full traceability and the Irish 
the Greyhound Board has made representations as part of the Greyhound Industry Bill, which is going through the Oireachtas currently, until such time as there is a full traceability system in place, which we support and encourage. I think it is very difficult to account for all dogs. Oh, but, but you do accept, I would imagine, that animal activists are very concerned about the dogs that don't make the grade and about the dogs who have ended their racing career and what happens to those dogs. Yeah, I, I accept there's an issue in relation to unaccounted for dogs, but I think the, the figures which are being thrown out are probably well in excess of what the actual figure is because of the number of exports to the UK and elsewhere. So are you uh, increasing any uh, the monitoring of what happens to those dogs? Well, I think it, we, we have looked for traceability as part of the new Greyhound Industry Bill, which is currently going through the Oireachtas. On the welfare side, we have an excellent relationship with all the welfare agencies. We are part of the International Welfare Forum. Um, I know the ISPA, a recent Oireachtas committee, um, did confirm that uh, people who have greyhounds, they get very little complaints about greyhounds and by and large that they are well looked after. So I think a lot has been done on the welfare side and again the Irish Greyhound Board will intend investing further in that area to improve welfare. Alright Ger, thank you very much. We'll leave it there.